I feel a little bit chastened, actually, in that um, so far we've had demographic problems, climate change problems, and energy problems. Assuming my colleagues in the preceding three institutes solve those, then it might be time to also think about new technologies for medicine. Um, so what I'm going to say a little bit about is what's going, happening on um, the, 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 in the area of uh, using nanoscience and nanotechnology to think of new approaches to, to medicine. Um, I thought I'd just start off with a very uh, rudimentary sort of introduction. Uh, uh, whoops. And this is really just putting this in context. So I guess you're all can, familiar with um, length scales of millimeters. And so, if you like, conventional surgery really operates on that and a little bit below and allows um, manipulation at the level of tissues and organs. The past few years, I, I doubt if there's anybody that hasn't seen images such as this for um, medicine, if you like, at the cellular level, which takes us down um, an order, uh, three orders of magnitude. So divide by a thousand, we get down to mic micrometers about the dimensions of cells. What nanotechnology is really concerned with is bringing this down by another three orders of magnitude, another factor of a thousand. And the illustrations I've chosen here are for two reasons. One, to show the sort of, um, the, the, the sort of constructs one can have at that level, but also the diff way, different ways of visualizing or thinking about them. So in terms of nanotechnology and nanoscience op offering possibilities for new possibilities for medicine, we need two things. One is to be able to understand the structure and to visualize the real thing. But secondly, the thing one frequently sees are, are, are rather more idealized pictures such as this. And so at the basic science level, we need to understand the relationship between how we conceptualize these, how we model these, and, uh, uh, and how we image them. Now, um, I think there's been quite a lot of um, proselytization or, 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 or hype about the, the potential of going down by another scale in terms of in intervening in the, in the biology of cells you, you, using nanoscale devices. So I, I think a, a, a sort of statement of intent, as it were, is that nanoscience and nanotechnology offers, has potential for both for medicine and for, for underpinning biomedical research. But also there's been, I think, um, a lot of misinformation or, 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 or muddle, it, 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 uh, particularly in the media, both in terms of as always, overselling a new technology. And then, uh, I guess, in reaction to that, maybe uh, too high a degree of panic about the, the potential hazards of that technology. And I think one of the things, when, if, if, if one looks at, uh, at what's going on in, in the laboratory, is that there's still, in many areas, there's been um, a surprising gap between the fundamental physical sciences technology of developing, for example, ca carbon nanotubes and then um, immediately using those uh, I I I in a potential technology, biomedical setting, without really exploring some of the basic science behind that. And I'll, I'll come back to that in a moment. So our underlying assumption I I is that by improving some of the basic science, we can then feed back uh, uh, and perhaps inform the discussion a little bit more. And so the discussion will be based upon actuality ra rather than either overinflated expectation or over-exaggerated risk. So let me um, unpack some of that a little bit. So one of the potentials is to use nanostructures, structures down at this subcellular level, to deliver drugs. But the worry is then that those same um, entities could act as toxins at that level. And so um, this would be the, the sort of cartoon that's beloved of uh, 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 biologists to try and explain um, both the, the potential and the risk. So this is uh, a sort of textbook picture of what the membrane surrounding a cell might look like, how you could take a, a, a carbon nanotube, a little rigid rod at, uh, down at this scale, attach um, um, a, a drug or a protein to that, and use this as, if you like, a nano needle to in inject into the cell and then release this. So this is from a, a paper recently from colleagues on, on the West Coast in the US. Uh, and, and their title is already evocative of the potential that this um, simple experiment gives you a possibility of a, 
a nano-injector that allows you to release things in a controlled manner within the cell. But between um, this cartoon and what's happening in reality, there's still a considerable gap. We don't really know at a very fundamental level what happens when you take, for example, one of these nanoscale carbon rods and penetrate a cell membrane with that. We don't understand the fundamentals of how um, these nanoscale constructs interact, not even not so much with the complexity of a cell itself, but even with the components of a cell. How does a carbon nanotube, if it is penetrates within a cell, interact with the DNA within that cell? How does it interact with different proteins? How does it interact, indeed, with the membrane surrounding the cell? And if, until you have that more fundamental understanding, then your, your, your observations or, or your proposals as to how it will in, interact with a cell are, 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 not, are going to be informed by rather weak fundamental science and may well be wrong. So what we want to do is, if you like, to establish more fundamental design principles for, for example, nanoscale drug delivery by understanding these interactions in more detail. And that also will give us a better understanding of potential toxicological effects if we understand the, the fundamental interactions in more detail. This will um, take place by a collaboration between essentially two areas, between the bio biological sciences and biochemistry and, and biophysical and physical sciences and physics. And there'll be a combination both of experimental work and computational work to try and understand the, the, what, what's going on at the molecular level. So, for example, the cartoon we saw earlier is an example from atomic force microscopy experiments where you will actually push a carbon nanotube across a cell membrane, look at the interaction with different cellular components, and that's ongoing within biological physics and the physics department. At the same time, we will be trying to understand in more detail some of the fundamentals of the interaction. Um, for example, the, for some reason, there's a an arrow disappeared here, but this is from a, a, a set of simulations um, looking at a, a fragment of a carbon nanotube and how it would interact with just part of a cell with um, part of a cell membrane. And already we see it's a little bit more complicated than the cartoon here where this clearly pushes, cleanly pushes through a cell membrane. Even if you simulate that at a very um, abstract level, you see that there's um, a put and then some of the, the, the membrane will remain attached as it enters the cell. So we want to use this combination of experiment and co computer modeling to understand these underlying processes, these underlying interactions in more detail, and then feed that back and use that to uh, um, inform both the debates as to the potential of these technology, but also to inform some of the debates as to the possible risks of these technologies. And I've saved, of course, the important bit to the end, which is um, the people involved. So um, I'm in biochemistry, uh, my co-director, Co-directors are John Ryan in physics uh, and Sonia Contera, also in physics. And we already have two, two fellows in place, um, Sonia Trigueros in physics, who's carrying out some of the AFM experiments, and Jane Wallace, who's here in the audience, and we've already seen um, some of the uh, early results from her, her previous computational work. Thank you.